What's going on there, folks? Good evening. Good Monday evening. It's the Earth Master here on this uh, November 14th, 2022 date. It's about 7.31 p.m. California time here along the West Coast. And the latest earthquake shows a 1.0 up into the area of Alaska. A pretty small microquake up there. Uh, here's a look at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity out here across the globe and a couple areas still kind of watching throughout the uh, western edge here of the filipino plate and areas around the java trench all showing some movement also down here in new zealand uh, i had a 3.5 coming in here pretty recently uh, that area around new zealand is one zone we're kind of watching for a potential larger scale activity uh, considering all the massive movement here across the Tonga Trench and portions of the Kermadec Trench here over the last couple days with uh, only very, very minimal adjustment down here uh, across the southern end of the, of the uh, Kermadec Trench. We did see a 4.7 coming in there a couple days ago, uh, just off the North Island of New Zealand, 22 kilometers for that earthquake. I uh, want to give a quick look here at the area around this region of New Zealand. Uh, a lot of folks know this fault system out here. We haven't really talked too much about it. Uh, it's a major plate boundary called the Alpine Fault. And uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to link a pretty interesting uh, uh, chat about it uh, from some, uh, looks like a couple geologists that were studying this Alpine Fault and the potential uh, for some large scale activity on that section of the uh, plate boundary here. I pulled up just the New Zealand area here, roughly about the southern end of the Kermadec Trench uh, and down here just off the coast of uh, the southern section here. Uh, this plate boundary, right, got the Australian and the Pacific plate boundary here shown. Definitely a lot of activity here over the last, oh, I don't know, quite a few years. Uh, last one down in the southern end here. Uh, along this plate boundary was a 7.8 back in 2009. But look at this area here, the the, um, the Alpine fault system here. Not a whole lot of activity whatsoever. I did pull up 6.5 and above. Uh, it's been a while since they've had any major earthquake activity on the Alpine fault. Uh, of course, north and around the Christchurch area, seen their shares of earthquakes, but it's not on the Alpine Fault. A uh, little bit of info on it here. Shows the uh, New Zealand zone here and the specific section of the Alpine Fault. Notice that seismic gap. Nothing. Nada. And the slip rate in this area, uh, cumulated slip rate, is pretty high. Um, there's a wealth of information on this Alpine Fault, but I'm just going to go over a couple different uh, segments here. The last major rupture on the Alpine Fault was back in 1717. So we're looking at now over 300 years ago. And regular intervals, by the way, vary. Uh, they range from roughly to about 160 years to 350 years. So it looks like the probability of seeing a large earthquake, uh, by large, I mean an 8.0 in that area of the Alpine Fault along that plate boundary. Uh, looks like the odds of an earthquake occurring the next 50 years has been set at about 29%. Um, following 2017, was estimated around the 29% level. But uh, average reoccurrence interval rates about 300, specifically 291 years, plus or minus 23 years. So. Uh, that's some time that has passed, and it all seems a little odd, right? We talk about the Cascadia. It's been over 300 years. Talk about the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault along the west coast. It's been over 300 years. A couple different areas. It's been around 300-year mark or so uh, since the last rupture or that uh, the last time it had a major earthquake in those specific areas. Just a little odd. Um Large ruptures can also trigger earthquakes on the faults continuing north from the Alpine Fault. So, um, you know, that's something we talk about a lot, how things can kind of just uh, have the domino effect, so to speak, uh, in terms of one earthquake possibly triggering something bigger on a nearby fault system. And um, 
the slip rate here uh, looks like slip rate ranges from about well they got it down here at 30 mm uh, per year that's 1.2 inches per year uh, and that's relatively high uh, I'm sure there's quite a bit of strain built up there since 1717 uh, at that slip rate and um, it's it's definitely worth a watching folks considering all the activity we've seen here across the region again um, not going to go over all of this there's going to be a video that I will post here towards the end of this video and you guys uh, recommend checking it out a couple geologists talking about this uh, alpine fault system here in the uh, history and how they've discovered these earthquakes and the intervals pretty interesting little uh, video I would definitely watch it um, at the end of this update video uh, but for now um, again not a whole lot of earthquake activity here across the region um, at least over the last 24 hours things pretty quiet and calm down here across New Zealand currently uh, aside from this earthquake showing up here at 3.5 uh, looks like that one somewhat deep there at the kind of looks in between the uh, it looks like maybe at the southern end there of the uh, Hikurangi subduction zone that's another one that kind of have to watch as well uh, let me see if I can bring up the GeoNet servers here and we'll check out the earthquake activity that's popping up or lack of uh, right now there's not a whole lot there's that 3.4 three hours ago uh, looks like about 40 kilometers deep here uh, 20 kilometers west of Wellington area so not a super deep earthquake but it is it does sit down there kind of at the um, at the southern end here of the Hikurangi subduction zone and uh, earthquake activity it looks like there were some uh, reports of some shaking down there from that earthquake as well uh, but aside from that 3.4 Looks like over the past couple days, a um, couple threes or so around the uh, North Island and down south there. So nothing major yet, though. But I'm just uh, I'm still keeping up the New Zealand earthquake watch here because I believe that there is sufficient um, projected movement down here along this area. Way too much activity up north, with only uh, you know a couple measly three uh, magnitude three earthquakes down here. Uh, to make up for that adjustment, I doubt it. So just heads up, New Zealand area. Watch that area pretty closely there, folks. Uh, Eight-pointer on the Alpine Fault here would be uh, a pretty damaging event, uh, that's for sure. Um, and by the way, the last earthquake around the New Zealand area, just specifically uh, in this zone right here, looks like it was back in 2021, the 7.3 uh, earthquake there kicked up in March uh, just uh, 182 kilometers northeast of the Gisborne uh, area and that is at the uh, kind of at the southern end here of the Kermadec Trench and at the beginning here of the Hikurangi subduction zone uh, and then prior to that we had uh, uh, some activity back in 2016 a couple of those look at that had four earthquakes back in 2016 uh, the largest one is 7.8 so activity does get pretty active along here, but again, seismic gaps. No earthquake, no major rupture here along the Alpine Fault in uh, well, 300 years, over 300 years now. We're definitely within that interval range of seeing a much larger quake potentially kick up. What do we see down here today in the Fiji Islands area? A couple earthquakes earlier this afternoon. Some deeper movement once again, adjusting way down below. For they're adding strain and stress up here along the uh, along this plate boundary. One of those earthquakes uh, looks like the latest one was 496 kilometers deep for the 4.3. Uh, not a whole lot of westward adjustment today. Things kind of stalled out here. That's why I think we definitely need to watch this zone. Uh, one earthquake there in Papua New Guinea, eastern uh, New Guinea area, 5.0. Uh, that one coming in looks like just a little bit ago. Is that today's earthquake? Uh, oh no, that was from yesterday. I was going to say that's that's only about uh, 12 minutes or so from dropping off the 24-hour uh, threshold. So that would leave this whole area absent as uh, far as 4.0 and above goes for today's activity. But um, luckily we have the EMSC here on the globe. Quite a few threes across the region. 
and around the Java Trench. So things trying to progress here, but nothing about 4.0 in that area. Uh, up here off the coast of Japan, of course, we had that 6.1 coming in. Uh, early, early, early morning hours, uh, just after midnight my time here. Uh, and then a little bit of further adjustment with a 4.6 north here on the uh, just off the plate boundary at 11 kilometers deep. But if you note here, uh, this 6.1, 357 kilometers deep. So that did add, if you think about this uh, trench right here, a couple different zones, a couple different uh, subduction zones. Uh, and that movement here definitely seemed like it added some strain further up north uh, with, that, with that adjustment right there. But I still think we should keep an eye on the Izu Trench area. Uh, there was one 4.2. That one pretty deep though. Man, look at that. A lot of deep activity with only very minimal uh, adjustment at the surface levels. Kuril Kamachaka Trench. Not a zip zero, folks. So where are we at? Look at this. Coming to a dead halt right now as far as earthquake activity goes. So something something stuck out here. I know there's a lot of areas that are stuck. And uh, those those seismic gap zones, folks, we need to watch uh, pretty closely. 4.3 up in Mongolia, northern Mongolia area. Looks like 10 kilometers for that 4.3. And uh, some activity in China. This one coming in yesterday, though. So really only... Only a couple new earthquakes here along this area of the world. Eastern Afghanistan, that one coming in late last night as well. Uh, South America looks like it's starting to kick up a little bit here in the Santiago area. Uh, up around the Peru Chile Trench, 4.3 at 20 kilometers deep. Of course, last week we did see, or not last week, but over the past couple days, we did see uh, some fives and even a six-pointer in this area. And that's very minor adjustment. This thing's very capable of producing some very large earthquakes. But for now, just a 4.3 here within the last hour and a couple other earthquakes over the last 24 hours up north. Into the Puerto Rico area, things kind of lighten up just a little bit as well. Mainly around the Puerto Rico area, uh, nothing going on across the trench uh, for now. Puerto Rico trench, most of the activity and swarming continued here along the southwestern edge of Puerto Rico. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, things kind of calming down out there. One earthquake from last night. Nothing further today across the region. Up here to the uh, North American continent outside of Montreal. A 3.0 coming in. Kind of odd earthquake. Don't really see too much activity up there. But uh, 3.0 today at 9.8 kilometers deep. The states down south here, pretty quiet across the eastern portion. And uh, into the southern plains, a little bit of activity around Oklahoma once again. And uh, that's mostly confined there around the uh, Minco area. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Just outside of the OKC area to the southwest, about 15 miles or so. Probably been through this area quite a few times out storm chasing. Um, looking at the satellite image here. Uh, does show some... Um, looks like some type of operations out here. I'm not for sure what that is. Uh, and I'm sure there's some oil fields out here. Just not a lot of them, but there is that little swarm out there uh, happening up here off Highway 81. A couple twos and some ones kicking off out there in the uh, beautiful state of Oklahoma. Into the Wyoming area, getting a little bit of swarming kicking up here once again. Some small microquakes, but um, activity continuing. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the Yellowstone overview real quick here and see what we have for the latest data. And definitely looks like that swarm is kicking back up here around the, looks like this is uh, the northwest corner of the park around Maple Creek. This looks like to be the epicenter range area. And there's a good handful of earthquakes here. Uh, and I would definitely say there's a lot more than uh, the 14 earthquakes listed up here on the map. But um, hey, the USGS doing somewhat of a good job there reporting a few of those. Probably uh, a little bit more than 14. Uh, let's see what else we got. Some movement across southeastern Idaho area and into Utah. Uh, California, down south here along the uh, plate boundary. No major swarms, no major unusual activity. Very spotty actually down here in Southern California right now. Not a whole lot of movement. Uh, across the Palmdale, Lancaster area, a couple earthquakes around the San Andreas Fault, uh, but nothing major currently happening. 
and just a few small microquakes across the southern portion of California. Uh, up against the foothills here around the San Joaquin Valley, uh, getting in on some deeper earthquakes here. 2.1, the latest quake here outside of Yosemite Lakes, 26 kilometers deep, uh, kind of kicking up right up against the uh, base there of the southern section of the Sierra Nevada Mountains. And uh, what else we got? Bay Area, pretty quiet, only a couple small microquakes, typical movement around Clear Lake. And up into Oregon around the, what is this here? A point two near Lava River Cave. Now this is just outside of the Newberry Volcano. So I think we're gonna check on that here in a little bit. Check out that seismograph station. A little bit of spotty activity around Mount Rainier and also Mount St. Helens as well. Um, or the uh, Alaska area, Cook Inlet area looking pretty active right now and also right around the Trident Volcano once again. Got about 10 earthquakes kicking up here and a little swarm of activity around that area of Alaska um, and mostly microquakes throughout the region here. A little bit of uh, interesting development here around the Aleutian Trench. Getting in on uh, some earthquakes out here in a little cluster, pretty good cluster here. About 23 earthquakes kicking up here around this volcano. Um, let's see what we got for the latest informational statement up here. Stand by for a second. Uh, bring in the, we'll check out volcano hazards up here real quick and see what we got for the latest activity. That's a pretty good swarm up there. So whenever I see activity kicking up here around a volcano, I kind of like to take note, uh, and that's going to be the area right around the, um, oh, what's this, is this a couple different names up here, these volcanoes, let me uh, zoom in here a little bit, I want to make sure I got the right one, so it's going to be this one right here, this area, one of these, Probably not that one. I think it's a little bit closer to this volcano right here. Uh, no major changes on it. Uh, but if you look here, there's a lot of unmonitored... Uh, uh, stand by for a second here. That one's not going to let me view it. Um, infrasound. Just trying to find a seismograph station that will let me see what's going on and none of this i can't get any of this to pop up here not for sure what's going on here most of the time when you click these they will pop up the seismograph and then you can click on them uh, from there but for whatever reason it's not letting me <clears throat> can't get any of these so i'll have to check back on that uh, but far as that uh, specific volcano goes everything looks green uh, across the board But uh, aside from that earthquake swarm, I mean, that's kind of uh, kicking up pretty good, I would say, around a volcano. 24 earthquakes there, so we'll check, we'll definitely check back on that, folks, and see what we can come up with. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on that, we'll, t we'll definitely keep an eye on that area. Uh, since it is swarming. Uh, let's see what else we got. The Big Island of Hawaii. Activity kind of mellow today. Only one earthquake up here outside of the Mauna Kea area. Mauna Loa, things kind of tapering off. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity today or the last 24 hours. But I want to be sure about that. So I'm going to go and check out the, uh, the information at the source. Let's see if I can uh, find the Big Island out here in the... Big, just got to follow the hot spot here. Uh, out here in the beautiful big Pacific Ocean. Still sits at an advisory and a yellow status. Um, hopefully these work. Let me key up a seismograph station here. There we go. So, let's see. Past 12 hours. Stand by for just a second. It always does that for some reason. There we go. Uh, past 12 hours at Mona Loa up at the summit. Uh, still some activity. Uh, I don't, it doesn't look like they're reporting all of the quakes listed up here on the seismograph, so uh, it's more active than uh, what the USGS is stating up there on the graph. 
So not super intense. I mean, if we've seen a, a major uptick of threes and fours and the whatnot uh, all over the place, we would probably be watching uh, for an alert uh, put out for that volcano. But right now, this is all just typical movement. Uh, nothing above what we've seen over the past couple months there since Mona Loa's kicked up. Uh, the informational statement here. Let me go over here to the uh, latest update here on the Mono Loa volcano. It's currently not erupting. Looks like uh, no significant changes uh, noted here at the volcano. During the past 24 hours, 32 small magnitude below 3.0 uh, earthquakes were uh, occurring. About two to three miles below the caldera and about four to five miles beneath the upper elevation northwest flank of Mauna Loa. And uh, both of those regions have been historically active in the past uh, during some unrest stages there. So just still kind of keeping an eye on it, folks. I mean, nothing changed yet. Um, just a matter of time, I believe, there for the uh, activity to really kick up. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Look at that earthquake activity around Tonga just all over the place. Deep activity, shallow activity, deep, shallow. Something's brewing down here, folks. Uh, just be on guard. Kermadec Trench south to the uh, Alpine Fault System down there in New Zealand. The trimmer map tonight. Let's go ahead and check this out. We've got about 17 epicenters of trimmer. And it's mostly up in Oregon. All of it is, actually. Uh, looks like outside, well, underneath the area of Oregon. Not a big deal, 17 epicenter. So let's go ahead and check out the Newberry Volcano in Oregon, considering that there was a little bit of earthquake activity up there. Uh, doesn't show it up here on the PNSN network, but we'll check it out and see what we got for the raw data around the north rim at Newberry. And, man, it's hard to tell with that. Give it a second here and see what we can come up with as far as seismic activity goes. Um, wow. Okay, here we go. Not a whole lot at all. Um, in fact, I don't even see that very small microquake uh, that was kicking up here. These seismograph amplitude lines are very um, tuned up. Um, they're, they're probably over-tuned. That's kind of why it looks like a uh, maybe a static on a TV screen, but... Um, not for sure why it's so tuned up, uh, amplitudes turn up so high, but as far as local seismic activity goes, man, get dizzy looking at this thing. <laughs> a lot of, uh, a lot of different wavy lines. Yeah, I don't really see anything local, um, at all from this seismograph station. So, uh, definitely doesn't look like there's any type of swarming there specifically around that Newberry volcano. Near Astronaut Butte, just outside the area of Newberry. It looks about the same far as the amplitudes go. Um, but earthquake activity, here we go. This is what I like to see. This is kind of how I want it tuned. That's what I look for when I'm looking at a good, decent seismograph reading. This is about perfect. The other one's just overblown. Um, so not, not a lot of earthquake activity at all. I don't see any. Um, and it's hard to tell if this is specifically one or not. But uh, we would see it. It would definitely be noteworthy. Uh, we'd see a, a pretty good spike, just like what we see here on the Yellowstone seismographs. They show up pretty nicely and distinct and sharp and pointy uh, as far as the seismograph readings go. All right, uh, solarham.net site showing some activity. Over the last 24 hours, it uh, looks like we peaked almost here into the M flare category. Uh, I believe that is an M flare. Uh, that kicked up here just recently from one of the sunspots and i'm sure i know which one it is it's going to be this guy over here this departing sunspot uh now it wants to get active as it's departing the the re the this area of the sun not going to be geo effective far as any cme goes flaring activity yes that's almost immediately because it still is within view uh, and that will create some uh um, conditions there for our far as radio blackout goes across the D uh, layer map. Um, let's see here. Look at that gigantic coronal hole over here. Let me uh, want to look at these structures here real quick on the 
on the area. Look at that. This whole area is growing massively, uh, getting pretty complex and in, uh, a lot of instability here with this flip with this uh, sunspot. So I wouldn't doubt it if this thing produces a moderate M flare. It's just looking a lot more dynamic than it has the entire time it was uh, traveling across the uh, the sun here, rotating across the sun. And uh, again, now that it's almost out of view from the Earth, it's uh, it's getting its act together. So we'll watch that possibly for an elevated flare. It looks like these guys have um, updated their status as well. 95% chance for a C flare. M flare around 45% chance. X flare has been elevated to a 15% chance. And that is due to the complex uh, instability there. Uh, of that complex magnetic field, the structure here, getting a lot of larger areas uh, very close together uh, in a couple different sections there. So that's going to be 31, 3140, I believe, right? 3140, 3145, 3140, uh, which they do have up here. It does harbor a beta gamma delta class complex magnetic field, 10% chance for an X flare. So look at that beautiful structure here look oh man yeah this thing's getting ready probably to produce a at least an upper m flare uh, so we'll watch that here overnight conditions right now it uh, looks like they're getting ready to um, notice the trend kind of peeking back up here after uh, that m flare the low grade m flare kicked off all right uh, coronal hole activity let's see let's check the newest image here and it's yeah it's down there. Um, I don't know if this is going to play any part here on the solar weather activity here on Earth because it is kind of facing southward of the Earth-Sun plane. Uh, it needs to be pretty much directly at us if we're going to see any type of uh, good conditions. I mean good because, well, elevated aurora conditions. But uh, we'll see how that uh, plays out in the coming days. But uh, watch that sunspot. Look at that. Looking pretty awesome there. Um, getting ready, I think, to produce a, uh, another flare. Current conditions, uh, at least for the forecast goes, green across the board, unless something major changes. Uh, here's a little bit of, when was this put out? The 14th. Uh, AR 3140 churned out numerous minor sea flares today as it gradually rotates closer towards the northwestern limb. An increased chance for a moderate M flare exists, 45% chance. Uh, the large sunspot cluster is no longer directly facing our planet and will remain in view until probably Wednesday when it begins to disappear behind the limb. So shouldn't have any issues with it uh, aside from some radio blackouts there if it does produce like an um, elevated M flare or even an X flare. Uh, but if there was a uh, massive CME from it, uh, not going to get hit with it uh, due to the location currently on the sun facing away from us all right folks have a good day stay safe out there again um, i'm leaving up the earthquake watch right now for the new zealand area uh, until we see some further adjustment either north uh, here along the pacific let me go back here get this back into view uh, until we see some major adjustment north here along the pacific ring of fire um, but i still think uh, man I still think it's in a prime spot for some uh, a lot of plate pressure in the region over the last couple days, over the last week. Uh, it's got to be under an enormous amount of strain here. So just watch it. I'll definitely watch it and um, just be prepared for sure. Uh, if something happens out here, a major earthquake or whatnot, uh, just got to be prepared for it. That's the best thing you guys can do. Uh, make sure uh, you got an earthquake plan. Extra food. I always keep extra food uh, in totes. You know, some canned foods, a can opener, uh, cups and bowls, spoons, toilet paper. Uh, always keep tons of water on hand. So, me and Missy Mimi's are pretty much we're uh, we're kind of preppers. Um, you know, and uh, we we like to keep stocked up on stuff. And uh, that's definitely one of the common interests that we have, aside from weather and earthquakes and nature in, in general. We like to prep and uh, be prepared. So. It's always a good thing to do. All right, folks. Have a good night. We'll catch you guys a little bit later on. Peace out, everyone.